I hit a few stumbling blocks on the machine that I am currently working on, a Singer 301. And I am waiting for a couple special parts so I can continue to remove uh, screws on the 301. There are at least two screws that are very badly stripped. So I figured while I'm waiting for these special parts to come in to help me get the screws out, I will at least take apart this PA style motor that comes out of the Singer 301. So I was trying to wipe off a little bit of this grease uh, just so when I, if I grab this end, I'm not getting it all over my hands. But this is a PA style motor. Um, I believe it's a PA style motor. Yes. I get my 404s and my 403s mixed up with my 301s. So I'm just going to take this motor apart. That's going to be my little project for tonight. Then I can sleep happily. So when this is plugged into the machine, it stands upright like this. This gear right here connects with the gear inside the hand wheel, which is what spins all the other parts around inside the machine. So if I were looking in the bottom of the machine and it was laying back, there would be two wires that connect to these two little prongs. Um, but to take it apart, what I like to do is I start at the bottom. There are two screws. Let's see if I can get you better light here. There are two screws. Uh, these are the brush covers actually. And I really just start here because the first thing I like to get a look at is the brushes and the commutator inside the motor. The commutator are what the brushes press against and spin around. So all I have to do to get to them, and if I wanted to just replace the brushes on this motor, I would only be removing these two screws and these two covers. Uh, I wouldn't have to take the motor apart. Uh, but what I need to do is just to loosen these two screws. And I'm really hoping and praying that um, I don't run into the same issue that seems to have plagued me with this particular machine. So I have a screwdriver that I know will fit in this hole. And let's see here. I'm just going to see if I can loosen oh, a screw that actually comes out. That's a good thing. So just turning this screw out. Mm, a little bit further. I don't like being defeated. It really bugged me. I couldn't get those two screws out. So I have to have some success today before I go to sleep. So this is my little attempt at it. Um, okay, so I took one of the brush covers off. When I get a good look inside here, I am looking at the brush. Uh, this is the little brass piece holds the brush. Uh, there's a little spring and then a carbon brush is attached. And for some reason it looks like the lighting is really bad. Let me try this. See if that, there we go. That helps a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, so uh, let me take off the other one before I get any further. The nice thing is, is there's not like a left and a right. So when I put them back on, they should go on either side. I don't need to worry about mixing them up. I'll take this one off too. When they moved away uh, to a little bit different style motor in the 400 series, um, they got rid 
of this little piece right here. Inside this little silver tube is a grease wick and you would fill it from time to time in this little hole, this little port. You would add grease, which would feed through the wick and uh, lubricate the bearing in the bottom of this motor. So if you're looking at a, a 404, or I'm sorry, any 400 series motor, <clears throat> a lot of what I'm doing is the same, except for you probably won't have this right here. So now I can get a little peek inside. And if you can see right in here, there's a little flash of copper. That's what the motor brushes are running against. Um, I don't know how good of a light I can get on it, but we're gonna take this all the way apart so you'll actually see it up close. So I just actually, I can use my fingernail, flick up this little brass piece that fits in, give it a little pull, out comes the motor brush. If I pull this out, now I have the motor brush and the holder for the brush in my fingers. And this brush is actually, it, I would wipe it off really good but there's life left to this brush. Um, if it were wearing down and it had went down to about here, I would replace it. But honestly, I have done a, I don't even know how many machines I've done. I've never ever found a brush down that far. I've heard some people say the original carbons are better than the ones that you buy to replace the machines. Um, so I wouldn't replace one unnecessarily. What you don't want to have happen is for the brush to wear down so far that you have metal hitting your commutator. Uh, either, I don't believe this is long enough to actually hit it, but the spring at the end of the brush may hit it. So I can pop out the other one too. Hopefully as easily. There we go. And, and all this black is just the carbon that turns into a powder when the motor spins and these go and run across the commutator. So I like to compare and see, are they about the same length? These two are. And there's life left in these. So I'll clean them up and put them back in the machine. So set this aside here. So I have the covers for the brushes. These are the screws that hold the covers on. The carbon brushes themselves. These little brass inserts. The spring goes down inside and the carbon pushes in. And the spring is just what allows the carbon to gradually release and press up against the commutator. Pretty simple. So set those aside. So the next step for taking apart this motor for me is removing two screws. One is here and one is here. And I'm just gonna see if I, I really like to give you some better light. So I may have to move that a couple times again. I'm going to start unscrewing this. As I do that, there's a little brass uh, nut in here. It's longer though than a typical nut and it's threaded on both ends. So the brush screw screwed into this end and this screw is really long. It goes the whole body of this part of the motor and it screws into the top of this brass nut. So what will happen is I'll unscrew this screw and this little brass nut is going to fall out eventually. So I just get my screwdriver in and hopefully no stuck screws, please. Thank goodness for Amazon. That's where my parts are coming from. 
and I ordered them today and they'll be here tomorrow. Oh, did you see that? There it came. Now this screw isn't unscrewed all the way though. So I'm just gonna give it a few more turns. Oh, it's loose. If I just go like this, turn it, pops out. So this long screw goes all the way down inside. It meets up with this long brass nut partially screwed into this nut here and the motor brush cover and screw is going in the other end. So set that aside and we'll take the second screw out. And if you hear any giggling in the background, that's my daughter. She's talking to a friend on the phone. And I did ask her to be quiet, but you know what? I'm not the only person who lives here, so I don't always have a quiet house. Um, I should be able to just twist this a little bit more. Let's see if I can get it to release. Sometimes they're kind of like, there's no good reason for them to not come out. It's just a tight fit. If I can't get it out that way, I'll try a magnet, see if I can pull it out. No, it doesn't want to catch. Okay, well. <laughs> I hope that when I get this machine finished, that it just amazes me because it has given me so much trouble just tapping the back there we go so all i did is i stuck my screwdriver down in this hole and kind of gave the end of this long screw a tap and there we go it came out all right as I pull this apart, I'm gonna be very careful because there's a couple pieces in here, a couple parts, that are going to fall out. One is a wedge and one is like a little insulator for the wires. So I just carefully, carefully start to pull apart. Now, before I continue, I want to release these little clips. So, these are little clips on the end of the wires. They press up against the brass of the motor brush housings or casings. I don't know what the right term is. I want to kind of free these up because if I pull this motor apart before I do that, I could break this little solder right here. And I haven't done that yet. I really don't want to because I would have to buy something else off of Amazon to fix it. So just give it a little pull. Okay. This is the commutator I was talking about. So these brushes press, let me find the right angle, up against the commutator like this, and it spins around. So one of the things I noticed was that this machine didn't go very fast. I said fast when I was testing it out. Um, it just was sluggish. But when I spin this commutator by spinning up here at the top, actually it spins very freely. And the reason why I check this is because there is a bearing here in the top of the motor. Um, and this is pretty dirty, so you can't see it. Actually, it involves, to get to it, you take off this, you have to take off this. Um, it's pressed in, so getting it out is, um, requires a lot of patience, which thankfully after four children, I happen to have. But because I can tell this spins freely. I know that this bearing, which has little ball bearings inside of it, isn't so 
uh, grimy and frozen that with, you know, just a normal restoration, it's not going to work. I've only ever had to replace one, uh, which was fun because I got to, you know, learn how all of this worked and take this off, but it was um, a little nerve wracking. But anyway, um, I know I don't have to address the bearing that's up in the top of this uh, motor that hopefully just by cleaning it, it's got a good spin. It even continues to spin when I give it a twist with my hand. So that's all I'm going to take off of this portion of the mo motor. Everything I do now will involve cleaning it. Um, I don't want to get any water down in here. So it'll involve holding it upside down, cleaning all of the gunk out of these little grooves. And then this will get a good spray with electrical cleaner and a good polish. I have actually two things I polish my commutators with. I wipe them down with uh, electrical cleaner and then alcohol, I swab them with a Q-tip. But I have like this little diamond stick or something. And so once this is plugged back into the machine, it will run and spin this and I can polish it that way. But I also found a really handy, uh, it's not really a tool. Um, this I got off of the Singer Featherweight Shop. Um, it's singer-featherweight.com, I believe. This little, uh, it's like a rubber stick and it must have a little bit of metal or something abrasive in it. But generally, if I just rub it lightly across the commutator, I can polish off off this, or polish off all this old carbon. And I don't know if you can see that, that we have the dirty commutator. And then you see right there, that's where I just ran this little stick over. And you would not believe how doing that speeds up the motor. Um, anyway, one of my little secrets, but next we still have, whoop, there we go. Um, so this is an insulator that I mentioned. Uh, this sets down in here and provides some insulation to the connectors that you actually plug the wiring into covers them up. The other thing that normally falls out is this little wedge right here, and it didn't come out, um, which is why this, is, whoop. All right, my little wedge fell on the floor. And, oh, I see it. Hold on, I'm gonna get it so I can show it to you. Um. <laughs> Ta-da wedge. Um, I'm dumb and I do this over carpet and I can't tell you how many black spots I've cleaned out of the rug under me because I'm constantly dropping dirty parts on the floor but I'm stubborn and I like my little rug so anyway this little wedge would have fit in between this piece here and the motor it just it keeps everything tight and secure so you don't have any bouncing and rattling so always look for those pieces. These can break. Um, and I think everything would work pretty well, even if it wasn't in there, but be careful. You really do want this piece. Um, and don't, you know, look out for it. Don't lose it. So this thing is so dirty. It's never been taken apart. All of this is carbon dust from brushes. Um, so this I will clean. I would love to know what this yellow paint means. Almost every motor I take apart has some sort of marking on it. I'm looking at this and these are copper wires and they're wrapped in some sort of, I'm guessing it's a heat resistant electrical tape. And I'm noticing on this one 
which I've never noticed before. This almost looks burnt, but I know the motor works because I gave it a test run. So it's not fried or whatever. I don't even know if that could happen with a motor like this. So I'm going to clean it and this will get a good spray with electrical cleaner and then left to dry for a long time. I'll polish these copper bits here uh, with the same little thing I got from Singer Featherweight, just to make sure that, you know, when they make contact with these metal brush housings, there's no corrosion or anything that would like inhibit them. I don't know if it makes a difference. All I know is when I'm done, they work, so. Last thing on this motor that I want to take off is the bearing on the inside. And if you look here, there's a little copper bearing. This bearing is a bearing, but it's different than the bearing in the top of the motor that I was talking about earlier. And this gets really dirty down in here. So I know I can take it out. Um, and it just involves, there are two little wings. There's a wing here and there's a wing here. And it's sort of like you push it down and you rotate it in and it clips under plastic. So I just put pressure on both of the wings with my thumbs. And I just kind of start spinning. And eventually, sometimes they come out really fast and surprise me. And other times I need a manicure when I'm done. And it's not really something that I could prep before I shoot this video. And it would just, you know, happen magically and easily. And I guess you could not do this step, but once I learned about it, I can't help myself. I have to do it now. So let me try just a few more times. There's a piece of felt in this one. I'll show you when I get it out that I'm wondering if it's making this whole process a little bit harder. I've never seen a piece of felt in there. Look at that. <laughs> this isn't washing off tonight. I'm going to tell you that right now. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Make myself giggle. Um, this is really in there. Okay. Take a deep breath, which is what I do when I get to a point where I'm stuck. And try again. So don't give up. So it does come out, I promise. But this machine has been the machine at first, so I may have to stand up. <laughs> I'm sitting down right now. Maybe that's why it's not coming out. Maybe if I stood up, that would help. So I hope you get a good laugh out of this at least. I don't really know what I'm doing and why I'm putting this stuff on YouTube, but it's just kind of fun to see. All right, it's not coming out. So I'm going to pause. I'll wash my hands and I'm gonna go watch a TV show with my husband. And tomorrow, after I've had a cup of coffee, I'm gonna come back, because this will not be my undoing, I refuse. So, next time around, while I wait for all my special parts from Amazon, I am going to get this bearing out. And if it's the longest video on YouTube ever. I don't care. It's coming out because I know it can. So anyway, 
Thank you for joining me on my journey of all that goes into restoring these machines. It is not a one day job, no matter how you cut it, but it is rewarding. So, Hello, well, it is a new day and um, I have my coffee and a really good lunch and I decided to come back and get the bearing out of the motor. Um, I'm smart enough to put on some gloves this time. I actually still have black on my fingers that I haven't managed to get off just yet. But anyway, I did go ahead and do this off camera, uh, mainly because I was worried I'd be struggling for five minutes and you would have to watch. So I'm going to take out the parts and I'll explain to you what I did to get them out because I tried something new. So the little piece I was trying to get out is this. It's just a funny shaped little thing with wings. It goes in, um, it has this curve, but the curve actually sets upright and these wings are pressed down under two tabs which you can see one of the tabs right here and then the opposite tab on the other side you can kind of see it right down there and they just kind of push it down and twist it and it clicks into place wait just a second i'm pretty sure i told you i would tell you what i did to get this out and i ended the video and never did that so here i am again because I want to stay true to my word so this little piece is resting down in here with the little wings clipped up under uh, these little raised plastic cutouts while it was clipped under what I did is I used my thumb on one side to press down and I use the end of a screwdriver to gently press down the clip. Oh, sorry about that. On the other side, because I just couldn't get enough pressure with both of my thumbs and it doesn't, I don't have really callous fingers, so it didn't feel great. So pressing down with my thumb on one side and then using the screwdriver on the other side, pressing down and just rotating counterclockwise and it popped right out. So I'd be careful with that because you are working around plastic that um, could break. It's not indestructible. So that's how I got it out. And I so what's under that is in this motor, something I've never seen before is this little piece of felt. And it looks like it was designed to be there. Um, I don't know you know, what the difference was between other motors like this I've done. I know this is a 301, it's not a 301A, so it came out earlier than the 301A. And there were small design changes from uh, some of those machines, and this could have been one of them. So I will clean this and I will put it back in when I reinstall the bearing in this little clip. This is the bearing that I just wanted to get out and clean. And uh, a couple things I'll note about this. This is just a round piece of metal. And actually, I think it's a special kind of metal where it's porous, almost like microscopically so, which would allow it to maybe retain some of the grease that's used uh, that lubricates the end of this commutator here, sits inside this bearing as the machine spins around. And because that's metal on metal, that lubrication is important, which is why we will add grease into this little port here that feeds this bearing. There's one other piece down in here. Um, this is a handy tool. It's a dental pick, but I use it all the time. Inside is another little piece of felt. I'll just tip it out. 
So the bearing sets on top of this. So when I reassemble this motor, I'll put this little piece of felt in first and then I'll set the bearing in. And also is the grease wick, which is in the tube. And these, depending on how old and hard the grease is, they take a little coaxing to get out without breaking them in half or a piece. And I guess if you broke off a small piece, it wouldn't matter. But depending on its condition, I'll either install a new one. See how handy that is? It just gets right down in there and I can push that, just that action alone pushed it nearly halfway out of the hole. So I think I got these at like a Dollar General years ago, this dental pick, and never dreamed that it would be one of my tools for working on a sewing machine. But just, I, oops, sorry. I get that to a point where I can grab it with, uh, say, a pair of tweezers. And then this little grease wick should just pull right out. So I'm giving it a little squish. It's pretty hard. So I'll try soaking it in some rubbing alcohol, maybe a degreaser. Um, I've tried all different kinds and uh, I have to say, for me, Craig Cutter has won the contest, but I have to be careful with getting it on the paint finishes. It doesn't strip the paint on these tan ones, but it will take a little of the shine off and you can uh, polish that right back to its original shine, but a black painted singer, I wouldn't come near it with Krug Cutter or alcohol or anything. That's a different ball game. So I'll clean this and put it back in. It'll actually be step one, getting that wick after I've re-greased it back up in that little port. So I told you I would come back and that I would get this bearing out and I did and I feel good. I'm going to stop for now, wrap this up. I have a Singer 99 uh, that I am going to be putting a new plug on today and uh, fixing a broken spring in the bob and winder. So that'll be in my shop soon. But I thank you for watching and um, maybe you learned a little bit of something. This isn't really that scary. Um, not nearly as many parts as I expected to find when I first opened up my very first motor. And now I can just do it from memory. So anyway, this machine will be for sale at some point in my shop, but I still have a lot of work ahead of me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.